For this section of the muscular system, we're going to talk about the macro and micro structures of skeletal muscles. When looking at skeletal muscles, you need to think of skeletal muscles as bundles of bundles of bundles, and that each bundle is surrounded by a connective tissue covering. First, we're going to take a look at the macro structures of skeletal muscles. The first structure is the muscle. A muscle consists of a bundle of fascicles, and fascicles consist of a bundle of muscle fibers. The dense fibrous connective tissue covering that surrounds the muscle is called the fascia, or epimecium. And the connective tissue covering that covers the fascicles is called the paramecium. And lastly, the connective tissue covering that covers muscle fibers is called the endomecium. Next, we're going to take a look at the microstructures of skeletal muscle. These structures require the aid of a microscope. So beginning with muscle fibers, muscle fibers are a bundle of myofibrils and myofibrils are made up of tiny little segments or contractile units called sarcomeres. And it's these sarcomeres that contain the myofilaments, actin and myosin. We are going to continue looking at the microstructures of skeletal muscle at the level of muscle fibers. So recall from a previous slide that a muscle fiber is surrounded by a connective tissue covering called the endomecium, which I will draw for you here now. The first microstructure of skeletal muscle that we're going to discuss here is the cell membrane of a muscle fiber that lies directly underneath the endomecium. This is called the sarcolemma. Because a muscle fiber is a cell, the muscle fiber does have organelles, and there's one organelle in particular that we will discuss, and that is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the organelle that provides energy for muscle contractions and that energy comes in the form of ATP. The other organelle that we will mention is the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus is like the control center of a cell. A muscle fiber is multinucleated, meaning that it can have many nuclei per cell. The space between the sarcolemma and the organelles is filled by a cytoplasm in a muscle fiber known as the sarcoplasm. The next microstructure of a muscle fiber is an invagination of the sarcolemma called the transverse tubule. So here's the sarcolemma, and you can see that the sarcolemma starts to turn inward on itself, forming a tubule or a passageway. This is the T-tubule. The next microstructure of skeletal fiber is adjacent to the transverse tubules. These are called the terminal cisternae. On the terminal cisternae, you will find voltage-gated calcium ion channels. As an action potential travels down the T-tubule and across the terminal cisternae, that action potential will open up voltage-gated calcium ion channels and allow calcium ions to diffuse out of the terminal cisternae. Attached to the terminal cisternae is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a network of tubules whose function is to store calcium, which will be released by the terminal cisternae. The next microstructure of a skeletal muscle fiber is the myofibril. Recall that a muscle fiber consists of a bundle of myofibrils. Myofibrils are long cylindrical structures that are made up of tiny little contractile units called sarcomeres, which we'll discuss more in detail in the next slide. And it is within these sarcomeres that you find the myofilaments, actin and myosin. Next, we look at the different parts of the sarcomere. The sarcomere is the contractile unit of a muscle fiber and it consists of the myofilaments, actin and myosin. The length of a sarcomere is from Z-disc to Z-disc. And when looking at a contraction of a sarcomere, we look at the different changes in lengths of zones and bands found within the sarcomere. The A-band is the length of a myosin myofilament. The I-band is the distance between the ends of two adjacent myosin myofilaments of two sarcomeres. And the H zone is the distance between two actin myofilaments within the same sarcomere. As mentioned before, the sarcomere contains the myofilaments, actin and myosin. And it's the interaction between actin and myosin that causes a muscle contraction. Next, we're going to take a look at the different parts of the myofilaments. The first myofilament is actin. Actin has three parts. The first part is G-actin, or globular actin, which are the purple spherical structures that you see here. When strung together, G-actin forms F-actin strands. 
G-actin contains the active binding site for which the myosin head will attach and form a crossbridge with. The next part of an actin myofilament is tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is the light blue structure that looks like a piece of licorice. The function of tropomyosin is to cover the active binding site of G-actin. And finally, the last part of an actin myofilament is troponin. Troponin is attached to tropomyosin. When calcium is present, calcium will bind to troponin, which pulls on tropomyosin and eventually exposes the active binding site of G-actin. The next myofilament is myosin. Myosin is made up of two parts. The head, which performs a crossbridge with the active binding site of G-actin, and the rods. Actin is known as the thin filament, and myosin is known as the thick filament. And again, it's the interaction between actin and myosin that causes a muscle contraction. And finally, the last thing that we'll talk about is the binding of the myosin head to the active binding site of G-actin, which we call a crossbridge.